Herbal, Wikipedia Audio A herbal is a book containing the names and descriptions of plants, usually with information on their medicinal, tonic, culinary, toxic, hallucinatory, aromatic, or magical powers, and the legends associated with them. A herbal may also classify the plants it describes, may give recipes for herbal extracts, tinctures, or potions, and sometimes include mineral and animal medicaments in addition to those obtained from plants. Herbals were often illustrated to assist plant identification. Herbals were among the first literature produced in ancient Egypt, China, India, and Europe as the medical wisdom of the day accumulated by herbalists, apothecaries and physicians. Herbals were also among the first books to be printed in both China and Europe. In Western Europe herbals flourished for two centuries following the introduction of movable type. In the late 17th century, the rise of modern chemistry, toxicology, and pharmacology reduced the medicinal value of the classical herbal. As reference manuals for botanical study and plant identification herbals were supplanted by florist systematic accounts of the plants found growing in a particular region, with scientifically accurate botanical descriptions, classification, and illustrations. Herbals have seen a modest revival in the Western world since the last decades of the 20th century, as herbalism and related disciplines became popular forms of alternative medicine. History The word herbal is derived from the medieval Latin liber herbalis, it is sometimes used in contrast to the word florilegium, which is a treatise on flowers with emphasis on their beauty and enjoyment rather than the herbal emphasis on their utility. Much of the information found in printed herbals arose out of traditional medicine and herbal knowledge that predated the invention of writing. Before the advent of printing, herbals were produced as manuscripts, which could be kept as scrolls or loose sheets, or bound into codices. Early handwritten herbals were often illustrated with paintings and drawings. Like other manuscript books, herbals were published through repeated copying by hand, either by professional scribes or by the readers themselves. In the process of making a copy, the copyist would often translate, expand, adapt, or reorder the content. Most of the original herbals have been lost. Many have survived only as later copies, and others are known only through references from other texts. As printing became available, it was promptly used to publish herbals, the first printed matter being known as incunabula. In Europe, the first printed herbal with woodcut illustrations, the Puck der Natur of Conrad of Mejonberg, appeared in 1475. Metal engraved plates were first used in about 1580. As woodcuts and metal engravings could be reproduced indefinitely they were traded among printers, there was therefore a large increase in the number of illustrations together with an improvement in quality and detail but a tendency for repetition. As examples of some of the world's most important records and first printed matter, researchers will find herbals scattered through the world's most famous libraries including the Vatican Library in Rome, the Bodleian Library in Oxford, the Royal Library in Windsor, the British Library in London and the major continental libraries. China is renowned for its traditional herbal medicines that date back thousands of years. Legend has it that mythical Emperor Shenong, the founder of Chinese herbal medicine, composed the Shenong Benkojing or Great Herbal in about 2700 BCE as the forerunner of all later Chinese herbals. It survives as a copy made c. 500 CE and describes about 365 herbs. 
High-quality herbals and monographs on particular plants were produced in the period to 1250 CE including, the Zhen Li Benko written by Tang Shenwei in 1108, which passed through 12 editions until 1600, a monograph on the lychee by C. A. I. Xiang in 1059 and one on the oranges of Wenzhou by Han Yanzi in 1178. In 1406 Ming Dynasty Prince Zhu Xiao published the Zhuhuang Benko Illustrated Herbal for Famine Foods. It contained high-quality woodcuts and descriptions of 414 species of plants of which 276 were described for the first time, the book predating the first European printed book by 69 years. It was reprinted many times. Other herbals include Benko Fawai in 1450 by Su Yang and Benko Gangmu of Li Shijhen in 1590. Traditional herbal medicine of India, known as Ayurveda, possibly dates back to the 2nd millennium BCE tracing its origins to the holy Hindu Vedas and, in particular, the Atharvaveda. One authentic compilation of teachings is by the surgeon Sushruta, available in a treatise called Sushruta Samhita. This contains 184 chapters and description of 1,120 illnesses, 700 medicinal plants, 64 preparations from mineral sources and 57 preparations based on animal sources. Other early works of Ayurveda include the Sharika Samhita, attributed to Sharika. This tradition, however is mostly oral. The earliest surviving written material which contains the works of Sushruta is the Bauer manuscript dated to the 4th century CE. An illustrated herbal published in Mexico in 1552, Libellus de Medicina Libus Indurum Herbis is written in the Aztec Nahuatl language by a native physician, Martin Cruz. This is probably an extremely early account of the medicine of the Aztecs although the formal illustrations, resembling European ones, suggest that the artists were following the traditions of their Spanish masters rather than an indigenous style of drawing. In 1570 Francisco Hernández was sent from Spain to study the natural resources of New Spain. Here he drew on indigenous sources, including the extensive botanical gardens that had been established by the Aztecs, to record C. 1200 plants in his Rerum Medicarum of 1615. Nicolas Menard's Dos Libros contains the first published illustration of tobacco. By about 2000 BCE, medical papyri in ancient Egypt included medical prescriptions based on plant matter and made reference to the herbalist's combination of medicines and magic for healing. The ancient Egyptian papyrus Ebers is one of the earliest known herbals, it dates to 1550 BCE and is based on sources, now lost, dating back a further 500 to 2000 years. The earliest Sumerian herbal dates from about 2500 BCE as a copied manuscript of the 7th century BCE. Inscribed Assyrian tablets dated 668-626 BCE list about 250 vegetable drugs, the tablets include herbal plant names that are still in use today including, saffron, cumin, turmeric, and sesame. China, India, Mexico The ancient Greeks gleaned much of their medicinal knowledge from Egypt and Mesopotamia. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, used about 400 drugs, most being of plant origin. However, the first Greek herbal of any note was written by Diocles of Caristus in the 4th century BC although nothing remains of this except its mention in the written record. It was Aristotle's pupil Theophrastus in his Historia Plantarum, 
and a causes plant arum that established the scientific method of careful and critical observation associated with modern botanical science. Based largely on Aristotle's notes, the ninth book of his inquiry deals specifically with medicinal herbs and their uses including the recommendations of herbalists and druggists of the day, and his plant descriptions often included their natural habitat and geographic distribution. With the formation of the Alexandrian school c. 330 BCE medicine flourished and written herbals of this period included those of the physicians Herophilus, Mantias, Andreas of Caristos, Apollonius Mice, and Nicander. The work of rhizomatist Krat Euas is of special note because he initiated the tradition of the illustrated herbal in the 1st century BCE. The Demateria Medica of Pedanios Dios Corids, a physician in the Roman army, was produced in about 65 CE. It was the single greatest classical authority on the subject and the most influential herbal ever written, serving as a model for herbals and pharmacopoeias, both oriental and occidental, for the next 1000 years up to the Renaissance. It drew together much of the accumulated herbal knowledge of the time, including some 500 medicinal plants. The original has been lost but a lavishly illustrated Byzantine copy known as the Vienna Dioscurides dating from about 512 CE remains. Pliny the Elder's Encyclopedic Naturalis Historia is a synthesis of the information contained in about 2,000 scrolls and it includes myths and folklore, there are about 200 extant copies of this work. It comprises 37 books of which 16 are devoted to trees, plants and medicaments and, of these, 7 describe medicinal plants. In Medieval Herbals Along with Demateria Medica it is Pliny's work that is the most frequently mentioned of the classical texts, even though the work De Simplicibus of Galen is more detailed and notable. Another Latin translation of Greek works that was widely copied in the Middle Ages, probably illustrated in the original, was that attributed to Apuleius and this also contained the alternative names for particular plants given in several languages. It dates to about 400 CE and a surviving copy dates to about 600 CE. During the 600 years of the European Middle Ages from 600 to 1200, the tradition of herbal lore fell to the monasteries. Many of the monks were skilled at producing books and manuscripts and tending both medicinal gardens and the sick but written works of this period simply emulated those of the classical era. Meanwhile, in the Arab world, by 900 the great Greek herbals had been translated and copies lodged in centers of learning in the Byzantine Empire of the Eastern Mediterranean including Byzantium, Damascus, Cairo and Baghdad where they were combined with the botanical and pharmacological lore of the Orient. In the medieval Islamic world, Muslim botanists and Muslim physicians made a major contribution to the knowledge of herbal medicines. Those associated with this period include Messieu Meyer who, in his opera Medicine Alia, synthesized the knowledge of Greeks, Persians, Arabs, Indians and Babylonians. This work was complemented by the Medical Encyclopedia of Avicenna. Avicenna's canon of medicine was used for centuries in both East and West. During this period Islamic science protected classical botanical knowledge that had been ignored in the West and Muslim pharmacy thrived. In the 13th century, scientific inquiry was returning and this was manifest through the production of encyclopedias. Those noted for their plant content included a seven-volume treatise by Albertus Magnus Asuabian educated at the University of Padua and tutor to St. Thomas Aquinas. It was called De Vegetabilibus and even though based on original observations and plant descriptions it bore a close resemblance to the earlier Greek, Roman and Arabic herbals. 
Other accounts of the period include De Proprietatibus Rerum of English Franciscan monk Bartholomeus Anglicus and a group of herbals called Tractatus de Herbis written and painted between 1280 and 1300 by Matthias Platearius at the East-West Cultural Center of Salerno, Spain, the illustrations showing the fine detail of true botanical illustration. Perhaps the best known herbals were produced in Europe between 1470 and 1670. The invention in Germany of printing from movable type in a printing press C1440 was a great stimulus to herbalism. The new herbals were more detailed with greater general appeal and often with Gothic script and the addition of woodcut illustrations that more closely resembled the plants being described. Shen Nung Pen Tzao Ching of China Sushruta Samhita of India Three important herbals, all appearing before 1500, were printed in Mainz, Germany. Two of these were by Peter Scoeffer, his Latin Herbarius in 1484, followed by an updated and enlarged German version in 1485, these being followed in 1491 by the Hortus Sanitatus printed by Jacob Materbach. Other early printed herbals include the Kreuter Book of Hieronymus Tragus from Germany in 1539 and, in England, the new herbal of William Turner in 1551 were arranged, like the classical herbals, either alphabetically, according to their medicinal properties, or as herbs, shrubs, trees. Arrangement of plants in later herbals such as Crudeboek of Dodoens and John Gerard's herbal of 1597 became more related to their physical similarities and this heralded the beginnings of scientific classification. By 1640 a herbal had been printed that included about 3,800 plants nearly all the plants of the day that were known. Hernandez Rerum Medicarum and the Aztecs Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece, and Rome Papyrus Ebers Dioscorids de Materia Medica Pliny Naturalis Historia In the modern age and Renaissance, European herbals diversified and innovated, and came to rely more on direct observation than being mere adaptations of traditional models. Typical examples from the period are the fully illustrated De Historia Sterpium Commentarii Insignes by Leonhard Fuchs, the astrologically themed Complete Herbal by Nicholas Culpepper, and the Curious Herbal by Elizabeth Blackwell. Anglo-Saxon plant knowledge and gardening skills appears to have exceeded that on the continent. Our limited knowledge of Anglo-Saxon plant vernacular comes primarily from manuscripts that include, the Leech Book of Bald and the Lac Nunga. The Leech Book of Bald was painstakingly produced by the scribe Sild in about 950 CE. This was written in the vernacular tongue and not derived from Greek texts. The oldest illustrated herbal from Saxon times is a translation of the Latin Herbarius Apulae Platonici, one of the most popular medical works of medieval times, the original dating from the 5th century, this Saxon translation was produced about 1050 CE and is housed in the British Library. Another vernacular herbal was the Book der Natur or Book of Nature by Conrad von Mejonberg which contains the first two botanical woodcuts ever made, it is also the first work of its kind in the vernacular. In the 12th and early 13th centuries, under the influence of the Norman conquest, the herbals produced in Britain fell less under the influence of France and Germany and more that of Sicily and the Near East. This showed itself through the Byzantine-influenced Romanesque framed illustrations. Anglo-Saxon herbals in the vernacular were replaced by herbals in Latin including Macer's herbal, 
de Viribus Urbarum, with the English translation completed in about 1373. The Middle Ages and Arab World The earliest printed books and broadsheets are known as incunabula. The first printed herbal appeared in 1469, a version of Pliny's Historia Naturalis, it was published nine years before Dios Corrid's De Materia Medica was set in type. Important incunabula include the Encyclopedic de Proprietatibus Rerum of Franciscan monk Bartholomew Anglicus which, as a manuscript, had first appeared between 1248 and 1260 in at least six languages and after being first printed in 1470 ran to 25 editions. A Syrian physician Messier wrote the popular De Simplicibus, Grabadin, and Liber Medicinarum Particularum the first of his printings being in 1471. These were followed, in Italy, by the Herbarium of Apuleius Platonicus and three German works published in Mainz, the Latin Herbarius, the first herbal published in Germany, German Herbarius, the latter evolving into the Ortus Sanitatis. To these can be added Maser S. de Virtutibus Herbarum, based on Pliny's work. The 1477 edition is one of the first printed and illustrated herbals. In medieval times, medicinal herbs were generally referred to by the apothecaries as simples or officinals. Before 1542, the works principally used by apothecaries were the treatises on simples by Avicenna and Serapion S. Liber de Simplici Medicina. The De Synonymies and other publications of Simon Janusensis, the Liber Servitoris of Bulchasim ben Abarazarim, which described the preparations made from plants, animals, and minerals, provided a model for the chemical treatment of modern pharmacopoeias. There was also the Antidotarium Nicolai of Nicolas de Salerno, which contained galenical compounds arranged in alphabetical order. The Spaniards and Portuguese were explorers, the Portuguese to India and Goa where physician Garcia de Orta based his work Colloquios dos Simples. The first botanical knowledge of the New World came from Spaniard Nicolas Menards who published Dos Libros between 1569 and 1571. The work of Hernandez on the herbal medicine of the Aztecs has already been discussed. Otto Brunfels, Leonhard Fuchs, and Hieronymus Bach were known as the German fathers of botany although this title belies the fact that they trod in the steps of the scientifically fated Hildegard of Bingen whose writings on herbalism were Physica and Cau Cet Curie of 1150. The original manuscript is no longer in existence but a copy was printed in 1533. Another major herbalist was Valerius Cordus. The 1530, Herbarum Vivi icons of Brunfels contained the admired botanically accurate original woodcut color illustrations of Hans Waditz along with descriptions of 47 species new to science. Bach, in setting out to describe the plants of his native Germany, produced the new Kreuter book of 1539 describing the plants he had found in the woods and fields but without illustration, this was supplemented by a second edition in 1546 that contained 365 woodcuts. Bach was possibly the first to adopt a botanical classification in his herbal which also covered details of ecology and plant communities. In this, he was placing emphasis on botanical rather than medicinal characteristics, unlike the other German herbals and foreshadowing the modern flora. De Historia Sterpium of Fuchs was a later publication with 509 high-quality woodcuts that again paid close attention to botanical detail, 
it included many plants introduced to Germany in the 16th century that were new to science. The work of Fuchs is regarded as being among the most accomplished of the Renaissance period. The Flemish printer Christopher Plantin established a reputation publishing the works of Dutch herbalists Rembert Dodoens and Carolus Clusius and developing a vast library of illustrations. Translations of early Greco-Roman texts published in German by Bach in 1546 as Kreuter book were subsequently translated into Dutch as Pemptades by Dodoens who was a Belgian botanist of world renown. This was an elaboration of his first publication Crudiboek. Matthias de Lobel published his Sterpium Adversaria Nova and a massive compilation of illustrations while Clusius's magnum opus was Rariorum Plantarum Historia of 1601 which was a compilation of his Spanish and Hungarian floris and included over 600 plants that were new to science. In Italy, two herbals were beginning to include botanical descriptions. Notable herbalists included Pietro Andrea Mattioli, physician to the Italian aristocracy and his commentarii, which included many newly described species, and his more traditional herbal Epistolarum medicinalium libri quinqua. Sometimes, the local flora was described as in the publication Viaggio di Monte Baldo of Francisco Calzolari. Prospero Alpino published in 1592 the highly popular account of overseas plants de plantis Egypti and he also established a botanical garden in Padua in 1542, which together with those at Pisa and Florence, rank among the world's first. Albertus Magnus de Vegetabilibus the first true herbal printed in Britain was Richard Banks' Herbal of 1525 which, although popular in its day, was unillustrated and soon eclipsed by the most famous of the early printed herbals, Peter Traveris's Greet Herbal of 1526. William Turner was an English naturalist botanist, and theologian who studied at Cambridge University and eventually became known as the father of English botany. His 1538 publication Libellus de Reherbaria Novus was the first essay on scientific botany in English. His three-part A New Herbal of 1551-1562-1568 with woodcut illustrations taken from Fuchs, was noted for its original contributions and extensive medicinal content, it was also more accessible to readers, being written in vernacular English. Turner described over 200 species native to England. And his work had a strong influence on later eminent botanists such as John Ray and Jean Bauerhin. Western Europe John Gerard is the most famous of all the English herbalists. His Herbal of 1597 is, like most herbals, largely derivative. It appears to be a reformulation of Hieronymus Bach's Kreuter book subsequently translated into Dutch as Pemptades by Rembert Dodoens, and thence into English by Carolus Clusius then reworked by Henry Light in 1578 as a Niev herbal. This became the basis of Gerard's herbal or general history of plants. That appeared in 1597 with its 1,800 woodcuts. Although largely derivative, Gerard's popularity can be attributed to his evocation of plants and places in Elizabethan England and to the clear influence of gardens and gardening on this work. He had published, in 1596, Catalogus which was a list of 1,033 plants growing in his garden. John Parkinson was apothecary to James I and a founding member of the Worshipful Society of Apothecaries. He was an enthusiastic and skillful gardener, his garden in Long Acre being stocked with rarities. 
he maintained an active correspondence with important English and continental botanists, herbalists, and plantsmen importing new and unusual plants from overseas, in particular the Levant and Virginia. Parkinson is celebrated for his two monumental works, the first Paradise I and Sol Paradisus Terstris in 1629, this was essentially a gardening book, a florilegium for which Charles I awarded him the title Botanicus Regius Primarius Royal Botanist. The second was his Theatrum Botanicum of 1640, the largest herbal ever produced in the English language. It lacked the quality illustrations of Gerard's works, but was a massive and informative compendium including about 3,800 plants, over 1,750 pages and over 2,700 woodcuts. This was effectively the last and culminating herbal of its kind and, although it included more plants of no discernible economic or medicinal use than ever before, they were nevertheless arranged according to their properties rather than their natural affinities. Anglo-Saxon Herbals Anglo-Norman Herbals 15th Century Incunabula Nicholas Culpepper was an English botanist, herbalist, physician, apothecary, and astrologer from London's East End. His published books were a fissy call directory, which was a pseudoscientific pharmacopoeia. The English Fisitian and the Complete Herbal, contain a rich store of pharmaceutical and herbal knowledge. His works lacked scientific credibility because of their use of astrology, though he combined diseases, plants, and astrological prognosis into a simple integrated system that has proved popular to the present day. The legacy of the herbal extends beyond medicine to botany and horticulture. Herbal medicine is still practiced in many parts of the world but the traditional grand herbal, as described here, ended with the European Renaissance, the rise of modern medicine and the use of synthetic and industrialized drugs. The medicinal component of herbals has developed in several ways. Firstly, discussion of plant lore was reduced and with the increased medical content there emerged the official pharmacopoeia. The first British pharmacopoeia was published in the English language in 1864, but gave such general dissatisfaction both to the medical profession and to chemists and druggists that the General Medical Council brought out a new and amended edition in 1867. Secondly, at a more popular level, there are the books on culinary herbs and herb gardens, medicinal and useful plants. Finally, the enduring desire for simple medicinal information on specific plants has resulted in contemporary herbals that echo the herbals of the past, an example being Maud Grieve's A Modern Herbal, first published in 1931 but with many subsequent editions. The magical and mystical side of the herbal also lives on. Herbals often explained plant lore, displaying a superstitious or spiritual side. There was, for example, the fanciful doctrine of signatures, the belief that there were similarities in the appearance of the part of the body affected the appearance of the plant to be used as a remedy. The astrology of Culpepper can be seen in contemporary anthroposophy and alternative medical approaches like homeopathy, aromatherapy, and other New Age medicine show connections with herbals and traditional medicine. It is sometimes forgotten that the plants described in herbals were grown in special herb gardens. Such herb gardens were, for example, part of the medieval monastery garden that supplied the simples or officinals used to treat the sick being cared for within the monastery. Early physic gardens were also associated with institutes of learning, whether a monastery, university, or herbarium. It was this medieval garden of the 14th to 16th centuries, attended by apothecaries and physicians, 
that established a tradition leading to the systems gardens of the 18th century and the modern botanical garden. The advent of printing, woodcuts, and metal engraving improved the means of communication. Herbals prepared the ground for modern botanical science by pioneering plant description, classification, and illustration. From the time of the ancients like Dioscorides through to Parkinson in 1629, the scope of the herbal remained essentially the same. The greatest legacy of the herbal is to botany. Up to the 17th century, botany and medicine were one and the same but gradually greater emphasis was placed on the plants rather than their medicinal properties. During the 17th and 18th centuries, plant description and classification began to relate plants to one another and not to man. This was the first glimpse of non-anthropocentric botanical science since Theophrastus and, coupled with the new system of binomial nomenclature, resulted in scientific herbals called florists that detailed and illustrated the plants growing in a particular region. These books were often backed by herbaria, collections of dried plants that verified the plant descriptions given in the florists. In this way modern botany, especially plant taxonomy, was born out of medicine. As herbal historian Agnes Arbor remarks Subtherp's monumental Flora Grica is, indeed, the direct descendant in modern science of the Demateria Medica of Dioscorides. 15th Century Manuscripts Spain and Portugal de Orta, Menards, Hernandez Germany Bach, Brunfels, and Fuchs Low Countries Dodoens, Lobel, Clusius Italy Mattioli, Calzolari, Alpino England Turner, Gerard, Parkinson, Culpepper Legacy Footnotes Bibliography